up? Welcome to your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Friday. It's a finally freaking Friday. Finally. Finally. But we're plowing through another month here, man. This is nuts. Birthday month just flew right by. I almost forgot. Not that it was my birthday, but I just forgot what month it was yesterday. Anyway, you ever have that happen to you? Let's talk about it. Call me. Anyway, uh, please visit thebuckeyecast.com. Check out the video vault. Check out the gear. Get yourself a nice summertime t-shirt. Got some tank tops in there for you, you folks that like to show off your guns. You know, sun's out, guns out. Get yourself a tank top. Get yourself a water bottle. You don't have to put water in it. You can put anything you want in there. Vodka, bourbon. Although that tastes weird coming out of a metal water bottle. I have to rethink that. Anyways, check it out. Everything is on sale there. And the video vault is still up and running. 300, over 300 videos for you. I'm getting more up there this weekend. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, today, we're talking the latest recruiting updates Got some good news, some bad news. Oh, a wise man once told me, uh, always the bad news first, right, PC? Uh, always the bad news first. So we'll lead with the bad news, and then we'll uh, enjoy the rest of the show in all its glory. So bad news first. Avery Gatch, if I can say his name mean now, since uh, it looks like uh, he's headed toward the cheaters up north, why he wants to be a part of that. Outfit, I don't know. But Avery Gash, 6'5", 290 out of Franklin Meat Chicken. He's from Wiley E. Coyote High School. Never heard of that one. I'm sure it's good. Uh, he's the four-star, 9138, nationally ranked uh, number 240, number 16, interior O-lineman. Uh, but he does – I thought he projected as a tackle. They got him listed as a tackle. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, so he's going to the Cheaters. Uh, he visited uh, Ann Arbor for, for the spring game last weekend. He has six crystal balls to those dicks. So uh, it appears a decision has been made because he has announced a decision date of May 3rd. So coming up in a week or so. Um, the Buckeyes have been fighting to stay in the battle for months. Uh, Sharon Moore ramped up pressure on him uh, last fall. The Buckeyes were in early on Gatch and had him on campus like a half a dozen times. He was here plenty, but ultimately it's hard to beat a dominant offense. Offense. Show me your offense. <laughs> a dominant offensive line uh, school that is in your in-state school. So um, that's what they do. You know, they bring in linemen. Your head coach is a freaking O-line coach. So um, seems like a an understandable reason to go there. But anyways, He'll probably cancel his official visit to the Buckeyes in June. Uh, so scratch him off the list. We'll save some money on a steak and, and a dinner. Uh, but Justin Fry will have to crank up his heat on guys like uh, Javon McFadden and Joshua Blackston. Uh, we'll get out. To, we'll get to those guys in a second. But so and also watch for some new offensive lineman offers going out the door here soon by Justin Fry. Um, Buckeyes have been really selective in recruiting the offensive line since Justin Fry came on board. In the 2025 cycle, Ohio State has offered just 23 linemen. Georgia's offered 44. That's almost double. So Fry is lo also looking to take a smaller class this year, so you don't have a lot of room for error. You know, you got uh, Carter Lowe on board already, so that's great. A high four-star in-state guy. But uh, if you're going to bring in only three, you got to make them count. You can't bring in two more developmental projects and shit like that. So we'll see uh, who offers, who Fry offers here, the Fry Daddy. Um, get somebody else on those fries. Let's go. Uh, so let's talk about um, the two big guys, two uh, five stars here. Next, um, the Buckeyes have a real shot with these two five stars, two of the best players in the country. Uh, DeCorian Moore, the wide receiver out of Duncanville, Texas. Uh, he's 5'11", 175, reminds me of a ex spitting image of a Garrett Wilson, uh, but faster. <laughs> um, he's a 9991, almost a perfect 1,000. Third-ranked player in the class, number one receiver, number one player in Texas. So uh, currently committed to LSU, 
although I would say that's flimsy at best. Um, both these guys, San oh, David Sanders is the other guy. Sorry, <laughs> I probably should tell you that. Uh, David Sanders, you know him as the five star out of Charlotte, North Carolina, 6'6, 270, uh, number two player in the class, number one tackle, uh, number one player in North Carolina. Has crystal ball, one crystal ball to Clemson. I don't put a, a ton of stock in that. So, uh, he's the other dude. Both these guys have visited this spring, and uh, Moore is about to make his second visit this weekend, starting, I think, Saturday. Yeah, just Saturday through Sunday, I believe. Uh, anyways, um, I assume that's still happening. We haven't heard anything different. So um, he's making the, the probably the flight up from Texas. So I, I barring flight cancellations, which could happen anytime, we know that. Uh, but the Buckeye staff believes they're very much in the fight for Sanders and Moore. Um, Moore's recruitment has been kind of uh, weird, I would say. Some might say fascinating. I, I don't know. He's been committed to LSU for almost a year, uh, but no one thinks they're really the, the team to beat, right? Yeah. It's one of those situations probably where uh, the dude just locked up his position, locked up a spot with a high-level school. But no one thinks they're the team to beat uh, LSU. Uh, Texas fans and media are confident he'll flip to them. Oregon's also confident. So everybody's super confident. Right. Uh, but after more, he's bringing his mom this weekend. After this weekend, he'll return for an official visit in June. So that's three trips in a three month span. That says something to me. Uh, remember the old the old adage, watch what uh, recruits do, not what they say. So we'll see what happens there uh, with David Sanders. Very similar situation. He's already begun his official visits. Uh, he took one to South Carolina last weekend. Uh, the trip to Ohio State in March was a big one. Um, there were rumors that he could return in May before his official visit in June. So that would be huge, obviously. Um, if that happens, the Buckeyes are for sure a top challenger for his recruitment. So if these two visits happen, they're going to change opinions nationally on where Ohio State stands in these recruiting battles. Um, and more in late April and uh, Sanders in May. So if those two visits happen, which we assume this weekend's visit with Corian Moore is going to happen, then if Sanders comes in in May, then again for his official in June, that, that's huge. So uh, as far as Justin Fry goes, this is a big couple of weeks for him moving on. Um Justin Fry's 2025 20, class, like we said earlier, is going to be smaller, probably a three-man class uh, because he's taken four four-man classes the last two in a row. So uh, there's no room for missing. You can't miss on somebody. Uh, the Sanders recruitment is going to be close and down to the, to the last minute for sure. Uh, so the next few weeks are on the trail are going to be very important for Justin Fry. He has to be positive in his evaluations of other guards that he's recruiting. Uh, he has to make sure that in-state developmental guys that get to camp with Ohio State in June, he needs to make sure that those are proper evaluations and he he sees somebody there that he can bring in. But uh, Fry will be on the road to see some guys who visited the Buckeyes last month. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, Javon McFadden, he is uh, 6'5", 300 pounds from – Maryland. He is a three star, 8868, nationally ranked number 438, number 28 interior O lineman. So that guard type that you're looking for. And then you got uh, Joshua Blackston, 6'5, 275 from Baltimore, Maryland as well. Um, not currently ranked by 24 7. Has some lower level offers, but you know, it's just a matter of time before he starts getting those big time offers. Um, so McFadden's at the top of the list for guards. Um, he's a top 10 guard nationally. Um, you know, ignore those, those, uh, rankings there. Uh, he was at Ohio state for the spring game in April 13th. And then, uh, Joshua Blackson, uh, another tough evaluation here because he has an athletic profile that got Justin Fry's attention, you know, but 
then behind them are two guys that visited in the past, and Fry is going to have to reconnect with these guys. Uh, the first one is Rowan Byrne. He's 6'6", 297 out of New Rochelle, uh, New York. He is a four-star, 8912, nationally ranked 391, uh, number 34 tackle, number two player in the state of New York. Um, then the other guy is Caden Strayhorn, 6'3", 295 out of IMG. He is a three-star, 8875, nationally ranked 434, number 27 interior O lineman. Um, yeah, so he's originally from Detroit, so that should be noted. Uh, he's from the state up north, transferred to IMG, so got to keep an eye on him, see if I can reconnect with them. Um, what else here? Uh, <clears throat> talking about how state-level offensive linemen, it's, it's hard to find that type of quality. Um but the class of 2025 is the issue. It, it's weaker than the last few years, um, especially with interior linemen. Uh, Top-ranked tackles like Douglas Utu and Micah DeBose. Don't forget, Micah DeBose is actually born in Cleveland, uh, which could be important. Utu is the dude from Bishop Gorman, 6'5", 300 pounds. He's a four-star, 9'6", 5'3", national recruit, obviously. Number 66 player in a class, number two interior guy. And DeBose, 6'5", 315, is from, lives in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, number 77 player in the class. He's a 9'5", 8'8", number eight tackle. So those two guys um, – are likely going to end up at guard in college, even though uh, DeBose is listed as a tackle. But uh, most recruits are aiming to play tackle in college. They don't want to hear, you know, we can move you inside kind of thing in uh, in high in the recruiting process. So you got to walk that thin line, you know. So um, this 2025 class of old linemen is a little less important because the 2026 O-line class is freaking loaded, especially with talent in Ohio and around the area. So the Buckeyes want to load up in that 2026 class. So it makes sense to take a little bit smaller class here in 2025. Now, let's finish up with some – yeah. Oh, we got one more. We'll talk quarterbacks at the end. Let's finish up with some D-linemen. Um where are we at here? I just lost my spot. Holy shit. There we go. All right. Uh, so Larry Johnson's reloaded the defensive end group with uh, Zaheer Mathis, London Merritt, two high quality recruits, right, in this 25 class. Then you got Justin Hill. He's out of Winton Woods down in Cincinnati. We've talked about him before. He's a 6'3, 220, uh, a four star, 9443, nationally ranked number 126. Number 13 edge, number six player in Ohio, has national offers across the board. Um, so he's kind of a hybrid player, you know, at that size, the, the 6'3", 220. So if they're going to continue to recruit for that jack position and they have guys on the roster now who can play that, then maybe he's an, an option there. Uh, Justin Hill, that is. And then we got a few more guys here. We got um, Marion Dye and Damian Shanklin, both from Indiana. So that's useful. Right down the road, 6'5, 255 is Marion Dye. He's a four star, a 9317 from Elkhart, Indiana. Uh, nationally ranked 177, number 16 edge. And he has national offers by everybody. And then Damian Shanklin, 6'4, 230 from uh, Indianapolis. He's a 9478. Nationally ranked 108, number 10 edge. So he does have a crystal ball to Notre Dame. Makes sense it's from the state. So we'll see what happens there. Then you got Cleveland Heights, uh, Brandon Caesar. Um, I'm not a big Caesar salad guy or a salad guy in general, but um, Caesar's pretty good one. I like the croutons. Anyway, um, Brandon Caesar, by the way. Defensive lineman, 6'4", 255 from Cleveland Heights. Uh, he's a three-star, 8'7", 3'1", nationally ranked in the top uh, 700. So, But he does have offers across the board, a ton of SEC schools. All of them basically have, have offered him. Then you got um, Isaiah Gibson. He has an official visit scheduled for June 18th. Um, 
we'll see. He's a current commit, committed back in March uh, to USC. He's an edge rusher, 6'4", 245 out of Warner Robins, Georgia. Big time uh, program there. About six, let's see, he's a high four star, 9'6", 9'8". Nationally ranked number 57, number five edge, number nine player in Georgia. Again, obviously a, a national recruit. Then you got Zion Grady. He's from Alabama, 6'4", 225. Uh, so again, similar size to Justin Hill there. He's a, a little bit higher, four star, 9701, nationally ranked 56, number four edge, number five player in Alabama. He does have uh, three, four crystal balls to Alabama, one to Georgia. So might be staying in the South there, but uh, he uh, Zion has an unofficial visit May 3rd through the 5th. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, spring evalu evaluation should help decide which of the uncommitted defensive ends are highest priorities. Uh, and as far as defensive tackle goes, the Buckeyes don't need as many in this class. They really like what they have with the young talent on the roster with Hero Canoe, Jason Moore, and Caden McDonald. Um, so they'll probably only need two, two D tackles there. And uh, again, spring evaluations will help uh, uncover some of those pieces. Now finishing up a long show today. Jesus, you guys are getting a lot of good content. Um, can the Buckeyes find a QB1? For 2026. So the next few months will be important for quarterback recruiting in the 26 class. Uh, Chip Kelly can hit the road and watch prospects throw in person. Uh, then he'll see some guys in June in Columbus at the uh, during camp season, you know. And then uh, you could take Jared Curtis off the board. He committed to Georgia. Um, a bunch of new offers went out recently, but it, it's possible someone like a Will Griffin or Dia Bell, both from Florida. Will Griffin's from Tampa. Uh, Dia Bell's from down in American Heritage, I believe, in Lauderdale. So one of those guys could emerge as our QB1 over the next few weeks. Um, and then we also need to decide the order order of priority. You know, who's your one, two, three? You got to slot them in there and, and go after the top, top of the board. So... A lot going on with recruiting. I wanted to touch on the 26 quarterbacks because uh, history shows us that uh, this is when we we get in on our, our 2026, you know, that next class ahead when we land those quarterbacks or at least uh, start start working on them. So so I got for you today. Don't forget to hit, hit the BuckeyeCast.com. I greatly appreciate you. Hit like and subscribe as well on this video. We'll talk to you later. Go Bucks.